And now act two of Honeymoon for Sale, starring Lorraine Day. Well, morning has came, following in logical sequence of the night before. The rosy, baby-faced new day has sputtered and yawned itself into a semblance of a wakefulness. And the breakfast nook of the R.W. Wingate menage is redolent of that sweet and soul-stirring smell of fresh-made coffee, crisp bacon, and hot buttered toast. Looking starry-eyed, albeit still somewhat stage-frightened in her comedy farce role of the new Mrs. Wingate, Lucy trips down to join her pseudo-spouse and his Aunt Martha in a gastronomic ritual of breaking the fast. I suppose you'll be glad to hear that I won't be able to visit with you as long as I'd originally planned, R.W. You want Aunt Martha? Uh, more coffee, Lucy? Half a cup. Thank you. No, I'm going to sell the estate and take an apartment in town. So I'll be going back to Boston Tuesday. Yes. Well, about... I know, I know, about the stock. I'm going to sell that, too, as I've told you. Well, I hope that... You hope that you'll get it. Yes, well, you might. However, I... Uh, However? You know my wishes. I expect to see them carried out. You're 30 years old, R.W. Aunt Martha, if you're talking about Bob's getting married... You can see for yourself that he and I are... That's exactly what I mean, child. I intend to see for myself. Huh? If we leave here by three this afternoon, we should be in Harrisville by tomorrow night the latest. You two can be married, and I'll take the train on to Boston from there. Well, something the matter, child? Well, you, you, you surely don't mean that we should... That is... I uh, mean you... precisely what I said. You and R.W. will be married tomorrow evening. His obligation to me will be fulfilled, and I'll return home, and that'll be all there is to it. Just as simple as that. Well, I'm sorry, but it just doesn't happen to be as simple as that. Eh? Just because you're R.W.'s aunt, I suppose you think you should have everything your way. Well, that may be all right for him, because he doesn't happen to have any more initiative than a, a gnat. But it's not for me. It's my wedding you're talking about, and you might as well know that when I get married, I'm the one that'll name the time and place and, and, and anything else that goes with it. So there. And then you'll just have to excuse me. Lucy. Lucy. Now see what you did, Aunt Martha. What did you have to say all that for? What did I say it for? It seems to me she did most of the talking. Why, she might just as well have told me to jump in the lake. Huh. Come to think of it, that's practically what she did tell me to do. Yes, she did. <laughs> oh, Robert, dear. You know... She's a wonderful girl. Now, you go on upstairs and convince her that she should marry you right now, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's a dirty trick, but I'll do it. Well, it was a nice wedding. A bit rushed, but nice. Rushed? It was the fastest wedding I ever saw. There were so many people waiting that the justice gave us the short treatment. Well, we're married. That's something. Yes, isn't it? Well, I'll go get the car. All right. You can wait here with Aunt Martha. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lucy? Yes? You don't seem very happy for a bride. Oh, I'm happy. I'm a little numb, I guess. It's all been kind of a shock, everything so sudden. Mm -hmm. Well, here, child. What's this? Well, what does it look like? An envelope, of course. Read what's inside, but not until after I'm on my train, you understand? All right. Oh, there's the car outside. Well, don't stand around moping, child. Come on, come on. Oh, by the look on your face, a body would think you'd just been to your wedding. <laughs> Awfully quiet since we left the station, Lucy. Something on your mind? No. Glad your aunt caught the train in time. Almost missed it. Yes. Tired? A little. I, uh, think we'd better stop over here for the night. It's much too long a drive without any sleep. All right. Shall we try that place up ahead? If you like. Here we are. Honeymoon Haven. Hmm, quite a name. <laughs> yes. Well, seems to be about the only place around. Let's take a chance. I wonder where the manager is. Oh, 
Here comes someone now. Uh, good evening. Uh, can I help you? Good evening. Yes, we're looking for... Uh, newlyweds, ain't you? How did you know? Oh, you get so as you can tell him. And I ain't been running this here motor court 22 years for nothing. That's how long we've been here. Me and the wife, 22 years. Long time, ain't it? <laughs> yes, it certainly is. But right now, we were wondering if you happen to have... I know what you're looking for. And it so happens we got just the place for you. And people went out this morning right over here. Now, this is what we call our bridal suite. <laughs> Usually rented, too. It's four dollars for the night. You're lucky to get it. Now, under ordinary circumstances, we... Yes, well, that's fine. But, you see, we were more or less looking for two rooms. One for me and one for my uh, uh, wife. Huh? Look, mister, we'd rather not go into detail. We simply want to rent two rooms. Hmm. Say, are you sure you're just married? Well, of course we're sure. Got a license? Yes. Right here. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I can't let you have two rooms. Why not? Don't uh, rent them singularly. At least two people got to occupy a room. We're crowded for space. All right. Thank you, then. We'll try someplace else, won't we, Bob? <laughs> I don't reckon you'll have much luck. Why? This is the only place in town. You mean this is the only hotel in Harrisville? Yep. <laughs> Convenient, ain't it? Oh. Well, Lucy, what do you think? Well, I... Well, mister, I'm afraid we can't drive all the way back to the city tonight, so... So you'll take the bridal suite, huh? Don't you have something else rather than a bridal suite? What's the matter? Something wrong with it? No, it's just that it, it seems a little extravagant. Oh, well... <laughs> I guess I, I could let you have this here room and next to it, it's three and a half. Let's take it. Shall we, dear? All right. I'll unlock the door for you. It's very nice. Thanks and good night. Night. Oh, here's your key. <laughs> Almost forgot. Thanks. Good night. Night. Well, here we are. Yes, here we are. As soon as he goes in, I'll go out to the car and sleep. Better take a blanket with you. I will. Lucy. Yes? Thanks a million for everything. Oh. You've been wonderful. And we'll get your annulment tomorrow. Yes, I guess we'd better. Hasn't been too unpleasant, has it? Putting up with Aunt Martha and me? No. Oh, that reminds me. Your aunt gave me this envelope when we were in town. She... Said to open it after she had gone. Well, let's see what's in it. Look, Robert, it's shares of stock in your company, and that's funny. What? Look who they're made out to, Mr. and Mrs. R.W. Wingate. That's odd. And here's a note with a newspaper clipping. Robert, it's the advertisement you had in the paper. What? And listen to this. My dear child, as you will notice, I've had this stock made out to both you and R.W., so that when you sue him for divorce, you will be assured of a reasonable amount of the proceeds which he has acquired through his marriage to you. R.W., as you put it, has all the initiative of a gnat. <clears throat> you might advise him that the next time he puts an ad in the newspaper for a wife, he has someone other than his butler place it. Evans is a very talkative fellow. My love to you both, Aunt Martha. Well, what do you think of that? She knew about us all the time. Yes. And so I haven't got the initiative of a gnat, huh? So she didn't even think I could give you a fair settlement, huh? Well, I'll show her. Lucy, do you think I'm a stuffed shirt? Do you? Well, yes, And you've been I... thinking all along that I should stand on my own two feet rather than let my aunt lead me around, haven't you? Well, I... Haven't you? Yes. And for the first time, you're getting a little apprehensive about being here alone with me, aren't you? Aren't you? I guess so. Good. I... Lucy, come here. No. Lucy. Now keep away from me, don't you? Lucy! Lucy, I've got to tell you, I love you. I have from the first. I just didn't know how to say it. Honey, I know this sounds sort of silly. Men don't usually go around proposing to their wives. But will you marry me again? The way you want it, with all the trimmings? Will you, Lucy? Oh, darling. I never thought you'd find the courage. <laughs> Come to think of it, neither did I. But in the immortal words of John Paul Jones, I have just begun to fight. How much are we paying for this room? Three and a half. Why? 
And how much did the man say the bridal suite was? Four dollars. But why? Because I'm leaving an extra half a dollar. That's why. Pack up your things, honey. We're moving. Oh, R.W. And so the curtain comes down on our play, Honeymoon for Sale, starring Lorraine Day. In just a moment, I'll be back with our star. Now here is Wendell Niles. Young men, the Army Medical Department offers you a future. Now the Medical Service Corps has openings for optometrists, civil, chemical, and sanitary engineers, and men trained in the sciences allied to medicine. If you have a degree, you may be able to qualify for a commission and the career opportunities it provides. Pay, allowances, and retirement benefits are attractive. To see if you can qualify, write the Surgeon General, Department of the Army, Washington 25, D.C. Now, once again, our star and our producer. There was a great celebration among the Ute Indians when Lorraine Day and her twin brother were born in Roosevelt, Utah, because they considered the birth of twins a very lucky sign. Lucky for Hollywood, it turned out to be. Tell us, Lorraine, did you make any plans for Hollywood and pictures there in Roosevelt? <laughs> well, hardly, C.P. You see, we moved to California when I was nine. But I did learn to ride a horse and rope a calf. And the only thing I was sure of at that time was that Gene Autry couldn't have done any better. <laughs> well, Lorraine, I understand that when you moved to Long Beach, you immediately got yourself all mixed up in dramatics. I joined the Little Theater Guild there, and I was fortunate enough to study under the late Elias Day, who directed plays for the Guild. He was a great inspiration to me, so much so that I took his name when I started working pictures. A wonderful tribute indeed. You know, Lorraine... Many in our audience will remember your portrayal of Nurse Mary Lamont in the Dr. Kildare series. That brings to mind the story, C.P. Along about that time, the studio began to plan other things for me. And it all worked out splendidly because the writers of the Kildare series had written a fatal traffic accident into the next of the series, in which Mary Lamont was the victim. It gave drama to the series, and it gave me freedom. Which is as it should be. Well, Lorraine, thanks for giving our production what biographers might call the lucky Indian sign, but what we'll call a swell performance. <laughs> well, it was grand fun, C.P., appearing on stage for you. But before I get away, what does the billing read for next week? Our billing for next week, Lorraine and ladies and gentlemen, stars Miss Buff Cobb in a play titled Dottie's Dilemma. This is all about a girl cub reporter who sets out to break the new story of the year and whose entanglements with gangsters lead her straight into jail for safekeeping. I know you won't want to miss this one, so be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we star Buff Cobb in Dottie's Dilemma. Until next week, then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. Lorraine Day appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by Lou Reed with the music of Eddie Dunstetter. This program was transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>